this is very awesome. So this is a feature of Git Lens. All right, welcome to a new video. My name is Dave and my goal is to help you level up as a data scientist. In today's video, uh, we'll go over what Git is and how to use it in VS Code for data science. Here's what we'll cover in this video. We'll go over Git for data science. Uh, we'll set up a project. Uh, I'll introduce Git Lens, which is a VS Code extension to basically supercharge Git. I'll show you how to create a repository uh, and then we'll go over some basic Git operations uh, within VS Code. So this will not be an in-depth guide on how to use Git, but more a guide on how to use Git within VS Code. All right, so for those of you that don't know, Git is a software for tracking changes in any set of files usually used for coordinating work among programmers collaboratively developing source code during software development. So basically we, keep, we can keep track of changes in our code uh, and it says that it's used for software development but of course we as data scientists we also write code uh, so we also want to keep track of our changes and share this code with others. Why do we want to use Git for data science? First of all, we can keep track of changes to our code. We can test new features without breaking the original code. We can refer back to all the versions of the code if needed. And we can back up our files on the cloud using GitHub, GitLab or Bitbucket. Um, and a good thing to know, uh, which is something that confused me in the beginning, Git is not the same as GitHub. So Git is a version control system that lets you manage and keep track of your source code history. And GitHub is a cloud-based hosting service that lets you manage your Git repositories. So these two are different. So you can use Git to also track changes locally uh, on your machine without having to push them uh, to the cloud, to, to GitHub. And that's something I will show you later in this video. And Git also makes it easy to collaborate with a team by sharing your code and also keeping track of changes, seeing who did, did what. So when I started out um, with data science, I used to do all my projects in, in Jupyter Notebooks and I would just create code and then I had something working and then for example, I wanted to change something or I would add a new feature or add a new function, for example. And then all of a sudden everything broke and you're like, oh shit, what did I do? How do I refer this back? And you hit command C, command C, command C within each of the different uh, notebook cells. And then you come to, do, to the conclusion like, shit, I really messed up my code and it's not working anymore. This is where Git um, can help us before we make any major changes to, to code that is already working. We want to back it up with Git, make sure we track the changes. So now let's hop into VS Code uh, and I'll show you how to set up Git and how to use it within your data science projects. All right, to follow along, you need two things. First, you need Visual Code Studio installed on your system. So if you don't have that yet, um, I would highly recommend that you uh, install it. It's free and explore it. Uh, it's an amazing tool for data science. I also have a video on how to set up VS Code for data science, which I will link uh, somewhere up here. So that's the first thing. Second, you need Git installed on your system. And uh, I will leave this link in the description. Basically here, you can see how to install Git on either Linux, uh, on Mac, or here on Windows. So make sure you have VS Code and Git installed. Let me open up VS Code. What I did is I created an awesome new data a science project. The folder is here on my desktop. It's using the, the project structure that I use uh, for my data science projects. It's currently empty. It's just an example. But this is the folder uh, that we will be using. So let me just first open that up in VS Code. So I'm here in a new blank VS Code document. I'll open a folder. This is the folder that I want to import. So my awesome DS project. Open it up. I'll allow that and I'll allow that. Yes. So here we can see that we have the folder now imported within uh, a VS Code project. What I will then do, um, these are just some basic procedures that I follow whenever I start up a new data science project is I will save this uh, as a workspace. What this will do, I will save this in the same folder. What this will do, this basically will create a, a code workspace file uh, that can store all the settings of this uh, VS Code project. So now whenever I want to open up this project again I can just open up this file or go to recent and then open up this file and I will have all the folders in here. Now another thing that we have to set up is an extension called git lens so you can first of all go to the extensions by clicking on this uh, icon over here and then search for git lens and this 
is the one we need. So I already have it installed, uh, but if you don't have it installed, it will show a big uh, install button over here. Uh, so you can just click on that, it's free. It will install in a couple of seconds. Uh, you might have to uh, refresh uh, VS Code, but it will uh, let you know that. And I will later show uh, what this does, but as I said, this will basically supercharge Git within VS Code. So now we're in this project and let's say for example, uh, we're here in the, the data stage and we create a data prep file for example uh, let me do my imports uh, we need a python interpreter so I'll just select my base anaconda environment have some imports run that all right so we'll fire up an interactive jupyter session if you want to know how to do this uh, i also show that in the video about uh, how to set up vs code for data science Again, link will be somewhere up here. And now we're ready to go. We'll start with our project. So for example, we'll uh, start as we data scientists usually do. And we start off with a data frame. And this will be a very boring data frame, but let's just for the sake of demonstration, create a data frame like this beautiful so we have a data frame and all the things that we just did in our file we want to make sure that we keep track of those because later if you want to change something for example and we want to refer back to this awesome data frame we want to know that these changes are stored somewhere so how do we do this well on the left over here we have uh, the source control icon within VS Code that we can use. So on a new project, it will say there, uh, this workspace currently doesn't have any folder containing a Git repository. And that's because we have to create one. So VS Code makes this very easily uh, easy. We can just hit the initialize repository button here. And what this will do, and to show you, I will open up uh, this, this folder and let me just quickly show the hidden files. So I do that uh, on Mac by hitting a command shift and, and the dot. On Windows, this is different, but this will show you the, the hidden files. And as you can see, there's already a git ignore uh, file in here uh, because that's in my default project structure, but there's not git folder here yet. So that's basically what this button over here does. It says initialize repository. So if we do this and then uh, we have to pick the folder in which we uh, we want to initialize it and I will use the same folder. So our awesome DS project. And so now if I go back, what we can see is we now have a Git folder here. And basically this folder is used to keep track of all the changes. So Git will do its thing here. And this is normally, this is hidden. So if I, uh, if I hide the hidden files again, you won't see it here, but just so you know, this is what's happening in the background. So we create a hidden file. Everything that we do is tracked over there. So now we have a, a local uh, repository, a local workspace that we can commit the changes to. So we just created the first file. And what we can now do is if you're familiar with Git, we can do a commit and also leave a message for that. So uh, we'll do just first commit and then I'll hit the commit button. We can say yes. So now we've committed the changes to our, uh, our Git file and we can now keep track of those changes as well. Now I can also show you um, what Git lens can do for us. So we've created a Python script and we initialized the data frame here and then we committed these changes and then we added another line. So this could be another feature. This could be a change to your code. And what we can now do is I close out this interactive session. I can click on this icon over here and we can preview the changes. This is very awesome. So this is a feature of Git Lens. After installing Git Lens, these icons up here will become available. So here on the left, you can see our uh, previous file that we've committed. And here on the right, you can see our new file. So what we've added, let me give you an example. We'll run it like this. So everything is working. And then for example, we change some things around and I want to add a four here, but all of a sudden I make a mistake and uh, I, I delete a bracket. All right. So we, we change this, uh, we close this out. And then uh, the next day I come back and I want to run my code. And all of a sudden we have an error and we're like, 
what? Yesterday, this was working fine. Why, why is it not working anymore? This is obviously uh, a very obvious error, but believe me, this will happen all of the time. You're working on a project, you come back the next day or, or even an hour later and, and things break down because you accidentally hit, hit the backspace or you accidentally typed a comma somewhere and um, things just break. <laughs> it will happen. What we can now do is we're like, oh shit, how do we resolve this? So now I go back and I can see, oh wait, we have some changes here. And what I can then do is just take this line over here, for example, just adjust it. And now I adjust it manually like this, and then we're good to go again. So let me save this, okay, close this out, and here we're good to go again. That is how you can track changes locally. Another thing that I notice is uh, here, over here, you every line that I now um, click on, you will get a little notification like, okay, you made changes here for uh, four minutes ago. At times that can be convenient to have it there, but I also find it a little bit distracting to have it always on. And I believe it's the, it's the default. Yeah, so I believe it's a default. So how you disable that is you uh, hit command shift B or control shift B on, on windows. And what you can then do is you, there's a command, git lens toggle line blame. So it's the one over here. You can also search for it like toggle line blame. And if I hit enter, as you can see that that will uh, disappear. So that's one setting that I think by default is on and I change that to off. That is how we can keep track of local changes. But now let's say, for example, you want to push this to the cloud. You want to push it to, to GitHub, to uh, share it with your colleagues, for example, to work on a project together. How do you do it? So we go back to uh, the source control icon here in the left menu in VS Code. And uh, first of all, it says, oh, we have new changes. So let me just for example, we, we messed around, but I'll, I'll create the second data frame. Uh, we'll call this C D. All right. So perfect new file, it will change. And then we'll hit the commit and uh, I'll say edit uh, second data frame, data frame. And we commit it. Yes, that's all right. All right. Now that we've committed everything, we have this other big button over here that says publish branch. And this lets, uh, lets us push our code, our repository rather, to, to GitHub to make it available for our colleagues or just to store it in a cloud to be uh, yeah, more safe with, uh, with our code. What happens when we click publish branch? First of all, you can define a name of the repository. So I write my uh, my folder names in a way, uh, in the same way that I would write my, my GitHub repository. So I'll, I'll leave that at this. So awesome DS project. And then what we can check here is we can publish to uh, a GitHub private repository or a public repository. So this is up to you. Uh, typically for work, it, most of them will be private, of course. I've already configured uh, my GitHub uh, in VS Code to be connected to my GitHub account. Probably if you do this for the first time, you have to authorize it and then log in and give permissions, etc. Uh, but should be very straightforward. So I'll show you how to publish it to a private repository. So uh, I'll select this one, hit enter. And what this will now do, here we get a success message and we can open this on GitHub. So let's go to GitHub. And as you can see, we're here on my GitHub and we have our repository in here with all the files and also all the commits. So as you can see, we have our first commit and also here the message added a second data frame. So we, we can check this out here and here we have the data prep. And as you can see, we have two beautiful data frames here. So that's how you publish uh, your code to GitHub. Now, lastly, I will show you how to work with Git branches using VS Code. So let's say, for example, you're in an awesome project and uh, you want to add a new feature. So for example, this will be new feature that you want to implement and you don't want to continue on the master branch, but you want to continue on uh, a new branch to make sure that you can keep things separated, uh, just to make sure that nothing breaks. Uh, so let me show you how to do that. So for example, just for the sake of demonstration, we add a new row to this data frame. Awesome. And we want to publish this to a new branch. So how we do this is we go to uh, version control, source control. Again, we come down here to the bottom where it says branches. And as you can see uh, here, 
we just have the master branch, which also uh, we can check here on GitHub or on the master branch. And now we want to create a new one. We can do this by hitting the plus icon, then uh, designing on a name for our branch. So let's call this development. And then uh, we can either create or create branch and switch to it. Uh, to it. So I will do that. I'll create the development branch and I'll switch to it. Um, so now everything that we commit will be committed to the development branch. You can also see that here, enter to commit on development. Um, so this will be our new feature. We commit it, hit yes. It will commit it to the development branch. And then what we can do, we can push it, we can publish it. And what we can now see if we go uh, oh, it already refreshed. Now we have a master, but we also have a development branch and data and then our file. You can see that we now have our new feature with our new row in our awesome data frame. And now we're on development. If we check out the master, it's still the original one uh, with the, the less awesome data frame with only three rows. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's how you work uh, with branches. If you then want to switch, uh, for example, back again to the master, uh, you can do that by clicking over here. Uh, and then now we're on the master again. And yeah, if you want to merge these, these files together, you would do that just like you do with a regular GitHub project. So you can, uh, you can do this just from, from GitHub. You create uh, a pull request and then you can merge uh, your files. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you in this video, how to use Git within VS Code for data science. Um, I hope that you've learned something and I would highly encourage you to start exploring Git and using Git in your next data science projects. Now, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more videos related to data science, machine learning, Python, uh, basically everything to help you level up as a data scientist. Um, yeah, so if that's something you're interested in, you you should definitely subscribe. See you next time.